What's up, YouTube? You already know. It's your boy Sticks, and we're going back in the mix. So check this out. If this is the first time you're coming across my channel, do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button. It would help out the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. On this channel, I talk about everything locked up related. Sometimes I tell you my lockup stories. Sometimes I'm doing reaction videos. Today, we're going to go inside the courtroom for eight times that lawyers got attacked by their defendants. Should be pretty crazy. Come on, let's get into this. Come on. At another point, he raised his hand and complained that he had been giving his lawyer questions for potential jurors. My lawyer ain't going to speak up. It's plain and simple. Sir? I've been giving him questions. He's going to speak up. Sir, that's because it's not his turn to ask questions. The judge seemed to have enough, then ordered Payne to be removed from the courtroom. I keep telling you, he's a problem. Deputy. And this is where Payne takes matters into his own hands. The attorney reportedly filed assault charges, and for the defendant, court. He took that punch pretty good, though. He just stood up and kind of shook it off. That's got to be crazy to have somebody put their hands on you like that, and there's nothing you could do back to them. Man. Documents state Payne is no longer allowed to attend his own court hearings, and he will have to watch them remotely. This is Joshua Harding in Lansing, Michigan. He stands trial for two sexual assault charges. Standing over here is assistant prosecuting attorney Jonathan Roth. Reportedly, Roth asked the court to consider his sentencing time on the higher end. Now, look very closely and watch what Harding is doing with his hands. You can see Harding grabbing something out of his sleeve. Suddenly, he makes a quick run at Roth. And whatever he is holding in this frame makes this now a very dangerous situation for Roth. Luckily, he was able to get out of the way just in time. And Detective Brian Cannon was able to hold Harding back. And with the help of two court deputies, Harding was taken... Oh man, he must have had that sharpened up plexiglass. Made it through the metal detectors. Because anybody that's been to court, you already know. Just to walk in the courtroom, you gotta go through metal detectors. So whatever kind of homemade weapon he had... Didn't sound off on the metal detectors. To the ground. A spectator then appears to point something to Roth. It's a makeshift knife. Yep. Harding was sentenced to 20 to 60 years after he pleaded guilty <laughs> to assault with intent to murder, which will be served consecutively to his 19 year sentence for the sexual assault. This is William Green in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Green was staying at a mental health facility until he was arrested for battery. Now, at the Broward County Courthouse, standing here is defense attorney Julie Chase. Keep your eye on Green. He appears just to be sitting like everyone else in the room until he stands up and calmly walks up behind Chase while she is representing another person. At this moment, Green does the complete unexpected. Damn. It shocked everyone in the room and Chase can be seen grabbing the side of her head in pain. After a moment, officers apprehend Green tackling him to the- The way he kind of just stood there after he hit that lady, it looked like some type of mental illness. Like he didn't even understand what he just did. But that's crazy, man. Why would they put that lady in there around all these inmates if she could be easily attacked? It just don't make no sense. Ground. Other defendants who had been awaiting their turn in front of the judge moved out of the way as officers cuffed Green and eventually carried him out of the room. After the assault, Chase was taken to the hospital for treatment, and Green was taken to another mental health facility instead of jail. This is David Chiselton. He's at a sentencing hearing in Cleveland, Ohio. Reportedly, he pistol whipped his girlfriend and held her hostage at gunpoint. He then set fire to an apartment complex. Standing on the other side of Chiselton is his attorney, Aaron Brockler. 
The judge is currently handing down a 47-year prison sentence to Chiselton for felony assault and aggravated arson. You can't hear the audio right now because the body cam hasn't been activated yet. It's hard to see Chiselton's reaction from this angle, but he turns his head back just for a moment. And in this second, he shows his frustration. He just attacked his own attorney. Look, I understand these inmates sometimes get frustrated. Maybe they paid for their attorney or they get a public pretender or something like that. But for anybody out there that assaults a woman or does anything to a child, I have zero respect for you. Zero. And I never will have respect for you. So hopefully after this, they up his charges even more. Because he needs to be locked up. Hey, yeah. You know, you know you messed up, right? You want right? The officers eventually get Chiselton under control, then is quickly removed from the courtroom. The lawyer suffered a broken nose and a concussion from the attack. Damn. In a situation like this, usually their hands are handcuffed behind their back, not in the front. And for Chiselton, aside from possibly facing more prison time, he'll be serving a 47-year prison sentence. This is Peter Hafer in Cynthiana, Kentucky. Hafer was arrested on charges of burglarizing a Kmart store. Right here is his lawyer, Doug Crickmer. Hafer told the judge he didn't trust his court-appointed lawyer and thinks he should get a better one. I'm telling you, this ain't working. I can have, I can, I can have, I'd rather have the prosecutor be my attorney than him. He, he might give me a better trial. When the judge then declined his request, Hafer took another route in getting himself a new attorney. Now, keep your eye on Hafer and watch what he does next. Oh. Hafer just punched his own attorney. As the chaos moves off the camera, the He boomed him too. That was a good clean hit right there. He had no handcuffs on or nothing, so he was able to put some ump behind that. He got him good, that's for sure. Beauty soon gained control of Hafer. Crickmer was taken to the hospital for his injuries and Damn. reportedly did impress charges. But Hafer did get six months in jail for contempt of court. And it turns out his wish did come true. When he returned to court for the original burglary charges, he was appointed a new lawyer. This is Christopher Teal in Seattle, Washington. He's accused of sexually assaulting a woman at a car dealership right after kind of looks like Charles Manson's little brother, doesn't it? Or like he's been sleeping under a bridge or in holding for a while. He followed her into the bathroom. He's in court for a competency hearing to determine if he is mentally fit to stand trial. The man standing to his right is his court-appointed lawyer, Reed Birkeland. Everything seems calm, but then suddenly, Teal punches his own attorney. Damn, that had a little slap behind it. It sounded like he slapped him, but he punched him. He got a, he got him a little jab for such a little guy. Four King County Sheriff deputies took Teal down following the punch. While he is being removed from the room, you can see a spit hood was put over his head. Berkland seemed to be fine after the incident. He also withdrew from the case just a few hours after. Teal was later ordered to serve a sentence of eight and a half years to life after being convicted of first degree rape. Eight and a half years to life. And I don't want to repeat what his charges was because you already know how that goes. But yeah, I feel like he deserves more toward that life. That's a wide gap. Eight and a half years to life. So he'll be eligible for parole in eight and a half years. But he could spend up to life. That's a weird sentence. An unlawful imprisonment. This is Frank Hypolite. Just outside the King County Courthouse in Seattle, Washington. Now keep your eye on Hypolite. As he's running down the sidewalk, he now slows down to walking speed. And next, the unexpected happens. The man who just got sucker punched is a defense attorney that was walking towards the courthouse entrance. He then stumbles into the fire hydrant. As Hypolite continues to engage, it forces the attorney onto the road. 
Just as the attack started, this transit bus pulled up, and the bus driver hops out to help the attorney. Now, in a 2v1 situation, this attack seems to be over, but then suddenly, the attacker went for both men. Knocking them to the ground. A courthouse marshal came out of the building and got control of Hypolite. Reportedly, Frank Hypolite has been arrested four times in the last two months. The attack was also later reported to be random. Hypolite was charged with assault and his bail was set at $75,000. So a random attack. It just happened that it was an attorney or something. So I guess he woke up that day and figured, I'm going to walk down the street and the first male I come across, I'm just going to attack him. He must be living a miserable life. No money, no food, no girl, no house. And he figures he's better off in lockup because he's failing at life out on the streets. That's what it looks like to me. This is Michael Cox in Roswell, New Mexico. Cox was just convicted of criminal sexual contact with a minor. After the verdict was handed down, the judge called up attorneys from both sides. The man standing on the left is District Attorney Scott Key, who just assisted on Cox's conviction. When he's walking back, Cox takes a run at Key, pushing him to the ground. In this frame, you can see Cox swing at Key while he's down. If we rewind here, you can see Officer Cadia Smith opening the door just in time when the attack started. She acts quickly and gets Cox to the floor. When Key gets back up on his feet, he goes back in for some payback. The judge then gets out of his seat and runs to the chaos and orders everyone... He's the first one. That's what I was thinking. Everyone out of the room. Could you imagine being a lawyer or something and having one of these people swing on you or whatever and there's nothing you could do back to them? Nah, that's self-defense. He just ran up and hit you. You should be allowed to engage him and, and, you know, handle your business. That's the way I see it. That's crazy, though. Man. Alright, so that's pretty much it. But yeah, that was a pretty crazy reaction video. I could tell by the title it was going to be worth reacting to. But hey, check this out. Everybody who has recently subscribed to my channel, just know I really do appreciate you. I try to put content out every day. Sometimes on the weekends I might skip a day just because I do work a lot and I need a little time off. But if you're into lockup related content, go ahead and subscribe. This is the channel for you. But look, until next time, hold your head and stay out of courtroom.